everyone welcome back to my channel it's kai and today i have for you sort of a different style of video so i had gotten these stickers for uh, a few different luxury brands a while ago and i've really been wanting to use them plus i got some really pretty glass stones i recently did a haul video showing them off and organizing them if you want to go check that out but i wanted to make a somewhat simple set with them it had started as a set for myself something to wear on my own hands while I'm doing like product reviews, while I'm doing swatches, that sort of thing. And it quickly got out of hand. So I ended up with about five hours of footage that I thought I would throw together in a little work with me video. Since this set is pretty basic, it's just paint stickers and applying rhinestones. I thought I would use this as an opportunity to kind of talk about YouTube, talk about how I have approached content creation so far on this channel and how I kind of got into content creation. A little bit about me as well. I had posted a community post on my community page asking for questions. So if you're somebody who asked a question there, thank you so much. I will be addressing all of them in this video today. So yeah, this is just gonna be sort of a different, more chit chatty video where I go over my filming process, all of the things that I use to film, what I've learned about YouTube so far, and hopefully just give you guys maybe some tips if you're somebody who's just starting out. Just go over some of the things that I personally have learned over the last, I would say, six, seven months of me really diving into YouTube and really focusing on content creation. So yeah, let's get into it. First of all, a little bit about me. My name is Kai. I currently teach high school English full time, so I do have a job outside of YouTube. I would eventually like to get into content creation full time, at least for some time. I know that for most people, that's not a sustainable job. So I am currently working on my master's in teaching and at the same time working at a high school. I am going into my fourth full year of teaching at this point, and I am really excited for that. So thank you to the beautiful Toy who left me this question on my community tab. I got into teaching because I actually just really liked reading in high school. I liked talking about books that I had read. I liked discussing literature. I went to a school where there was a required course called a seminar course, and it was where you would read pieces and you would basically sit down and have open discussions about them. I absolutely love that class. A big part of that was probably the teacher I had. She was amazing. And so that really was something that inspired me to become a teacher. Now that I am teaching, I will say I love it. I really do. The school that I work at is amazing. It's a smaller school that really focuses on teaching the whole student and not just, you know, getting them to learn math and English and whatnot. But unfortunately, I do live in Florida and the pay is awful. I, I would love to do teaching as my, you know, full-time career. Uh, and I do, but unfortunately I'm finding, especially with the current economy, that it's just, it's really not very sustainable, especially if you are somebody who wants to travel, which I do really want to do more traveling. I grew up in Alaska, so not Antarctica, but basically close enough. Um, I think that's a big part of the reason that I really want to travel more. My parents always saved up for us to go on some sort of vacation to someplace warmer during the winter months because up there the winters are pretty brutal. They're dark and they're cold. So we always went on vacations for, you know, a couple weeks during the winter just to escape. That was something that they prioritized. So I got the travel bug at probably a pretty young age and I would like to continue doing so. Unfortunately, um, a teacher's salary is not super conducive to that, I will be honest. Uh, we just, we don't make very much and it is unfortunate because I do love my line of work, but that is partially the reason I started doing more nails and posting more about nails. I have always been somebody who did my own nails. I don't know why, I just didn't love going into a salon when I was growing up. I know that like getting a manicure is considered a luxury. I personally just, I don't know if it's like I have personal space issues or what it is, but I always enjoyed doing my own nails. I also enjoy the artistry of it. 
Some of you already know that I have a bit of a background before doing nail content. I actually used to do digital art. And so for a while I had like a digital art YouTube where I posted my speed paints and whatnot. That was like 10 years ago at this point, probably 2014, 2015. So I have always loved art. I loved nail art. And in about 2020, when COVID was happening, I really got into gel nails before I was always using regular lacquer, regular nail polish to do my nails and nail art. But 2020 COVID area and the increased accessibility of nail products online really allowed me to start getting into gel polish. I am self-taught, so I'm not a licensed nail tech, but I have done a lot of learning through YouTube and whatnot. So I decided earlier this year that I wanted to maybe start sharing some of the things that I learned on YouTube so that maybe I could help other people like other nail artists have helped me. I was a big fan of watching Emily Susanna and Evie from Long Hair Pretty Nails. People like that who did nails online and who kind of just like talked about their lives, used it as a creative space to both experiment and educate. So I decided that I wanted to start a YouTube as well. I had already been posting pictures of my nail sets and I had already set up an Etsy last year, last summer, and I had been selling a few sets here and there just as a way to supplement my income as a teacher over the summer. And so I figured if I'm making these sets, if I'm designing these designs, why not film it and why not share it? So that's kind of how I got into YouTube in general. It was a mix of being inspired by other content creators and already doing nail sets, nail designs for my Etsy shop and just figuring why not share those and share the things I learn. I also, I love being an educator. It's part of the reason I teach. I love helping and I love sharing things that I'm passionate about. That's really the main motivator for me as somebody who is doing YouTube now and as somebody who teaches. I just love sharing the things that I'm interested in and having discussions about them. So if you have been around my channel, I always try to respond to comments. Um, that might slow down a little bit now that school is starting again soon. I do have to make the kids a priority, but I love having conversations with you all in the comments about nail designs, nail techniques, whatnot. So please, if you are a watcher of my channel and you ever think about leaving a comment, um, please feel free to do so. Love talking with you all there. I also have a Discord. Any of you are welcome to join. I will leave the link to that in the description below. It's been a fun time so far. I have places for you to post sales, discount codes, your nail inspirations, your designs if you'd like feedback, recommendations, all that sort of stuff. So long story short, I got into YouTube and teaching for sort of the same reason. That being, I just really love sharing the things I'm passionate about. I love talking with other people about those things. And so that is why I teach. And that is how I got into nail content creation. The next question is from the lovely PJ at Sick Tips. And she asked what I would be doing if I wasn't an English teacher. And honestly, it would probably be something similar to doing nails on YouTube, doing some sort of creative work. I loved doing digital art when I was doing that back in, you know, 2014. And I actually took a couple classes for photography in school. I also took an animation class. So I've always just been really interested in art and creative endeavors. I didn't really think it would be financially stable for me when I was going to school. So I didn't pursue like a degree in art, but it is something that I've always loved. I've always had a passion for. So honestly, doing nail YouTube um, is, I don't, I don't consider it a career right now because I'm like, clearly I'm not like a huge channel or anything like that. Um, again, I'm just kind of starting out, but um, it would probably be something similar to this, something that was just more in the uh, artistic field. So with that, I do have a bit of a background in social media. The job that I worked before teaching was actually for... Um, a pretty well-known 
diet food company. Some of you might have heard of Nutrisystem. Um, my sort of first like real job out of college. In college, I got a degree for English and a minor in mass communications. So my first job out of college was working for Nutrisystem. I was an online support counselor, which meant that I both kind of like taught the program to people through chats and emails, but I also helped with their social media. So I do have a little bit of background in social media, which I feel like helped me make this YouTube transition easier. And it gave me some valuable insight in things like search engine optimization, how to have a consistent brand identity, those sorts of things. I feel like that job really helped me um, learn. That job was okay. The company wasn't treating me poorly or anything like that, and I did enjoy it for a while. It did feel somewhat fulfilling because we did have a lot of customers who were really happy with their weight loss and who, you know, had medical conditions where they were trying to lose weight for operations or whatnot who would, you know, chat in, call in, ask for advice, and give us updates on their progress. And that always felt really good. But I just, um, I don't know, I, it got a little tiring. At the end of the day, it was still a corporate job. And I just, I didn't feel like any of the creative part of me was being fulfilled. So I spent a couple years at that job before going back to school to get my teaching certification and start my master's and that's how I kind of ended up teaching but again that job gave me a lot of valuable insight I would say into social media in general. I actually started my Instagram I would say six months before I really started posting on YouTube. If there's one tip I could give it's to have both like a YouTube and some sort of other social media where people can contact you. Unfortunately with YouTube, there isn't exactly like a DM feature. Yes, you can comment on somebody's videos, but if there's any question that somebody has that you wanna keep private, there isn't really a way, at least at this point in time, where you can reach out to them directly through YouTube. So I would possibly suggest having an Instagram or Twitter, Facebook, you know, whatever other social media that you feel comfortable using available and attached to your YouTube, just in case somebody wants to send you like a DM if they have questions um, or if you're going to be like selling press-ons or whatnot through your YouTube, it's a good idea to have another place where people can contact you. So once you have your channel set up, once you have your other socials set up and linked to your channel, I would say the most important thing to do is get the studio app. So YouTube Studio, YouTube Creator Studio is not the same as the regular YouTube app. It is the section of the site that is for you as a content creator to see your analytics, to see your channel growth, to edit your videos. There's so much data and so much you can actually do on the studio app and the website. I'm not gonna get into all that because Quite frankly, there are some things that I still even am learning. I'm sure there are plenty of tutorials here on YouTube that you can go through to really dive into the nitty gritty of the app, but definitely make sure you have the app because it directly ties into this next question here. Thank you to the nail court. She asked me when I post on my channel, if there's like a specific time and how I determine that. And that is all based on my data for my channel. If you have the studio feature, if you have the studio app, you can go into your channel, click on the YouTube studio portion of the app. It will bring up all of these options on the left here. You want to click analytics and then click audience. Once you get there, if you scroll down, you will see a chart that says when your viewers are on YouTube, the darker the color, the more viewers that there are. So the more concentrated the, in this case, purple is, that's when more viewers are online. So you can see for me, it's generally in the afternoons. So in those hours between like noon to 6 p.m. Sunday is a relatively big day. It actually looks like my viewers have shifted towards Monday. So I might actually change to like a Sunday evening, maybe 
Thursday upload schedule if I plan on doing two videos a week. Right now, I really only have time for one, but I would say if you're going to be doing two videos a week, then I would spread them out over the week. I wouldn't like post them both on the same day. That way you get more even distribution of content out to your viewers. That way they have something to look forward to. And I personally have read a lot about posting an hour or two before your actual prime posting time based on your analytics. So here where it says, you know, like a lot of my viewers are online Sunday afternoons, I would probably post at like maybe noon exactly or maybe even one on Sunday afternoon because the way that it works, supposedly this is just what I've read online and articles, is that the algorithm might take a little bit of time to really um, grab hold of your video. So you want to post maybe like an hour or two before your optimal posting time. That way your video has a chance to sit and actually be picked up by the algorithm. And so you have a little bit of traction before that peak viewing time. I am always checking this chart and kind of like adjusting my upload schedule based on that. But I have noticed with YouTube at least that it's a trend for more people to be on during the weekend, which makes sense. You probably have more time to be watching long form content during the weekend. So I would say personally, if you are just starting out, you don't have this data yet to really look at, try maybe posting on the weekends, see how that goes for you. And then once you do have some data to look at, check that chart for when your viewers are on YouTube and go from there and kind of post around those times. But as always, experiment. I honestly, I don't even know if I currently have the best upload schedule for my audience. I I know I'm sitting here kind of talking about YouTube as if like I know a lot and I truly honestly don't. I am just sharing kind of the things that I've learned over the past half a year of starting to do YouTube. I still definitely consider myself like a small channel. Don't get me wrong. I'm super grateful for everybody who watches my videos and I cannot believe that I am at almost two and a half thousand subscribers at this point. I never really expected to grow at the rate that I have because I know YouTube's hard. You know, content creation is not easy. It is difficult to gain traction. When I was, again, doing my speed paints back in the day in like 2014, I think the most subscribers I ended up with at one point was like 150 and I was really proud of that then. So I am beyond grateful and I cannot believe that I am where I'm at. Please do not take this video as me being like, oh yeah, totally an expert on YouTube. I just thought, you know, I know there are a lot of you who watch my videos who are, you know, into content creation or who are trying to get into content creation because I have gotten some questions before. So I thought I would just sit down and kind of talk about my experience. And so, yeah, I would say if you're just getting started, try weekend uploads. So seem to be pretty popular among most uh, content creators in general. One other thing I just briefly wanted to mention is the importance of your descriptions for your videos. So from my understanding, YouTube takes into account your video titles, your descriptions, and your hashtags all when deciding kind of how to sort your video in the search engine. So if you've ever looked at my descriptions, they're usually pretty lengthy because I try to fully explain what I'm doing in the video and include any sort of keywords that I think might be search terms that are related to what people are looking for when they come across my video. So that's just something to note. Try to include well-written descriptions that include the keywords that you think will bring people to your content, people who are looking for your style of video. Okay, on to the second part of her question, which is filming equipment and clean looking clips. Marcy from Latina's Nails Designs actually asked me as well about uh, what I used to edit and how to stay in frame. So let me jump into filming and editing. First of all, let me give you a little bit of a desk tour. Please excuse the mess, but um, this is my filming space. I do have a room separate to my bedroom that I am lucky enough to be able to use for nail content and doing my press on sets. This was a recent acquisition. We just had a roommate who moved out of the house. And so 
my boyfriend and I decided to split the rent for the new room. And so now I have a dedicated space to do nails and I feel so much more productive in here. I'll give you kind of a closer tour. Everything, by the way, that is available on Amazon, I will link in the description down below. So all my filming equipment, that kind of stuff will be on an Amazon storefront. I did sign up to be an Amazon affiliate. So if you do purchase these things, I do get a little bit of a kickback. None of these were sent to me, however. All of these were items that I bought myself um, and have been using. So yeah, check them out if you are interested. But here's a closer tour of my desk. This one is just from Ikea. It's one of those basic, you buy the desktop and the legs desks. I have on top of it all of my filming stands. This one is my phone mount. I do film on my Samsung Galaxy 24. This is the brand Ulanzi. It will be linked below, but I love this because it's completely adjustable. There's this rod that the phone attaches to that you can slide up and down and also twist entirely around. Um, it's super easy to maneuver and so you can get really any angle you might want to capture with this phone stand. It does come with a ring light. I don't love that ring light though. I mostly use these two Dazney lights. I will warn you, these are expensive. I really wanted good lighting for my videos, so I did splurge on getting the two lights that come together in a pack. They have like a warm tone setting, cool tone setting, fully adjustable in terms of the type of light that you want to use and the brightness, but you can see with all three of these on, it just hits the desk from all angles and make sure that it's a nice and bright picture that you capture when you're filming. If I turn even just one of these off, I get kind of a harsh shadow from one angle. So whatever lights you do get, my recommendation is even if you're going with like a cheaper light, that you have multiple lights so that you have multiple light sources. If you want just that really nice, even lighting to where all of the details can be seen and you don't want any harsh shadows. To stay in frame, I actually use this portable monitor here. This was a pretty cheap one. I think it was like $60 on Amazon on sale. And it's not the best monitor, I'll be honest. It doesn't give you like amazing colors that are true to life, but it does the job that I need it to do, which is act as a secondary display. So my phone connects to this monitor just through the USB-C cable that attaches to the monitor and it will live feed to me exactly what I'm recording. That way I can just look at that instead of try to like crane my neck up over the phone mount and make sure I'm in frame. And so I always have a point of reference to see whether or not I am in frame. If you have an iPhone, I'm not sure that the same monitor would work. You just have to look into your iPhone specs. But I think if you have an iPhone and an iPad, you might be able to stream between them you would just want to do a little bit of research but yeah my recommendation is to have some sort of monitor to see what you're doing um the flowers on my desk they are decorative and the ones that you see in my videos but they also actually kind of help me keep um mindful of where i'm at in frame so i know if i'm like going past the flowers i've gone too far and i also make sure to line up my phone uh where i'm recording with kind of like the bottom edge of the desk so that I know where both the top of the frame is and the bottom without having to look at the monitor. But the monitor definitely, definitely helps. That has been the biggest thing when it comes to staying in frame for me. So definitely try to pick up a monitor. And here I just have my little tablet. It's one that I've had for years. It's nothing fancy, but I do keep it there in case I wanna pull up inspiration pictures. This is the mic I use. So this was actually a birthday gift from my lovely boyfriend. It is a Shure mic. It is expensive. Um, it's not something I would recommend to everybody who's just getting started, but I do think audio quality is pretty important when it comes to videos. So depending on which mic you decide to pick up, I would definitely recommend investing in whatever is within your price range and editing your audio to be as nice and even as possible just because i know a lot of like researchers who do social media say that your audio quality is important and a lot of people i think like to listen to youtube and just put a video on in the background and not necessarily watch it so if they're listening to it you want to make sure that your audio is something pleasing and something that is going to be 
a video that they will just put on in the background to listen to. I know that's how I feel. So like I'll put on a video in the background while I'm doing nails. And so if something sounds great, it's a major bonus for me. And I just have the mic attached to this stand here. This is a blue snowball stand. It's actually my boyfriend's old stand. It makes it super easy to move around and adjust to what I'm like sitting at my computer or sitting at my nail desk. I have my lamp on my work desk. This is my work desk. I have two monitors here to edit with and that's kind of like that setup. Please ignore the clutter. I was trying to be as real as possible with this video and kind of show you the true behind the scenes of what my workflow looks like. So that's my desk. There's my cat. He likes to hang out with me while I am editing and working. And I did want to show off kind of a little image here of what my desk actually looks like when I'm doing a set of nails, my work desk. So here's this. The only reason my shots look really clean is because outside of the frame, it's an absolute mess. Um, total chaos. So this is what happens when I film. I try to keep the area that I'm actually working in pretty neat and not have like too many of the supplies that I'm using in the actual frame. But outside of the frame, all of the supplies are just kind of strewn everywhere. So yeah. I don't have any sort of like glamorous solution for how to get a really nice looking shot. It's just kind of like that joke where your mom asks you to clean your room and instead of actually putting the things where they belong and organizing them, you just shove them all either under the bed or in the closet. That's kind of the situation here. I have everything out. It's just not in the frame. It's just hidden all around the frame. So yeah, um, I do try to clean up between each and every set and return my desk to like its original state with nothing on it that helps me kind of stay uncluttered between sets but when i'm doing an actual set all uh all bets are off my desk is an absolute mess the only reason you don't see it is it's just around the frame that i am working in thank you to crystal for asking do i draw out my designs beforehand i actually don't draw them out exactly Instead, what I do is I take design inspiration pictures and I put them together in like a mood board. So I have an idea already in my head of like what designs I want for each nail. And I have that mood board up on that little um, tablet that I showed on my desk tour so that I can reference um, designs. If I'm using a reference, sometimes I do designs just kind of like with no straightforward plan, just an idea in my head. For example, like this set here that you're watching, I really had no plan other than using the stickers. And I just, as I was doing the nails, it started coming to me, I guess you could say. So yeah, I don't fully draw out my designs. I would like to get to that point, And I know a lot of people do, and it saves them time. Right now, I just mainly work off of inspiration pictures. And I have an idea in my head beforehand of what I want for each nail. So next, I guess we can maybe talk about editing. So I just use CapCut for editing up until probably mm, two months ago, I would say. I was actually just using the free version, so I wasn't doing anything fancy. I just downloaded the desktop application for CapCut, used all of the free transitions and whatnot. I did recently upgrade to the paid version because they do have a feature there that might be worth it to you all. It is called the vocal isolation tool if you go under the audio settings and what it does is I believe it uses AI. I'm not sure if it's actually AI powered, but it will isolate just your voice and cut out any sort of background noise. So I live in Florida right now. Um, it's very hot, especially in the summer. We keep the air conditioning running pretty much all the time and it's very loud in the room that I'm currently filming in. So when I'm doing voiceovers, I always have a fan going in the background. And the really nice thing about the vocal isolation tool on CapCut is no matter how loud the air conditioning is in the background, it cuts it out completely. The hum of computer software, the background fan noises, all of that is cut out entirely with that vocal isolation tool. It is a paid feature though, so I did go ahead. I 
bit the bullet i bought the year subscription to CapCut just for that feature i think if you're not needing anything like that the free version gets the job done totally fine there's nothing in the pro version i would say for like my level of content creation that i needed aside from the audio editing so that's why i got the pro version but the free version is great honestly I love using it. I think it's so easy to use because they have a lot of rebuilt transitions and uh, text animations and that sort of thing. I remember when I was doing YouTube speed paints, I had to use Sony Vegas Pro, which was a program that was bare bones compared to what we have today. If you wanted to do like a fade out, you had to do it by keyframing in the animation and adjusting the darkness manually. But now if you want to do like a fade in, a fade out, there are presets on CapCut that you can add in the click of a button. Definitely check out CapCut if you are not already using it. I personally edit on my desktop computer unless I'm editing like a, a short on my phone. It's just easier for me. I find it better to manage on the computer. So that is my setup for editing. When it comes to the actual edits I make my videos, it's not very much. I do some color grading. Even though I have like the lights that you can adjust in terms of warmth, I always find that my videos turn out a little bit too warm for my liking. So I do go in, I adjust the color just slightly to be a bit more cool toned. I have this white silicone mat in the background for two reasons. One, it's really easy to work on and clean. If any nail polish gets on it, you just wipe it away with alcohol and it's totally fine. For the second reason, I did white because I like the look of a white background and it's also really easy for me to match the white color of the mat to like a true white when I'm editing. That way I know that my colors are a little bit more close to what they look like in real life. So for example, like if my video is looking too yellow, I know it's that way because the matte in the background will actually have a yellow tint and vice versa. If I have, you know, footage that's a bit too cool toned, the matte's gonna look a little bit more gray than white. I can also adjust the brightness according to the matte in the background. Um, it's just really easy to map white with white when you're editing your videos. So I think that was all of the questions people asked me. Um, so now I just wanted to kind of chit chat about YouTube, what I've learned, some things that I have struggled with quite honestly. So I am somebody who has kind of a, a go, go, go personality. I honestly started this channel because over the summer I get bored and I need something to do and I like to feel like I'm accomplishing something so I really got into YouTube over this summer specifically because I just I needed a project to work on one thing that I've really been trying to focus on is actually not focusing on the numbers so I initially started YouTube not necessarily because like I wanted to get really big and I wanted to make money from it don't get me wrong those are definitely pluses and it's something that I am forever grateful for. Um, the fact that I reached uh, YouTube partnership numbers and have been able to like monetize my videos and that sort of thing. So it's not that I don't care about the numbers. It's that I am trying not to obsess over it, if that makes sense. There's definitely like an addictive property i would say to social media i'm sure you know a lot of you have felt that before and i'm trying to keep this honestly as my my happy space and a place where i'm just creating based on what i want to create and not focusing too too much on if what i create is going to be received well i think for me personally if i worry too much about the numbers this sort of creative endeavor for me would become too much like an actual job and that stress and that anxiety is going to make it not fun for me anymore. So as much as I know that we all like seeing the growth and as much as I am very thankful for my viewers, 
and the growth that I have seen. I'm trying really hard to not make that like the end goal for me personally, just because I know it's going to give me burnout and I'm going to run out of steam. I want the main motivator for me to not necessarily be like the channel, but um, the, the videos that I create. So um, my biggest tip if you're getting into YouTube is yes, celebrate your wins with numbers, but try not to let it like dictate what you're doing. I do videos based on, you know, what I'm enjoying in the moment. Um, the set is a good example of it. You know, it started as something simple, something that I wanted to make to wear in videos when I didn't have a set already on. And it kind of just uh, exploded and got a little bit more complicated than I initially planned, but I really enjoyed making it. So there was a time where I was kind of like, mm, should I be doing videos that are trending? Should I be trying to do designs that are maybe going to gain traction in the algorithm? And ultimately at the end of the day, I think I just, I probably do my best work when I'm just making things that I enjoy and I'm just doing designs that I like to do. So I would say, you know, focus on yourself. Make sure that you're having fun with it. The minute you stop having fun with YouTube, with content creation, I think that's when a lot of creators see burnout. So yeah, uh, just make sure that what you're doing is something that you're still enjoying. That is probably my biggest tip and it'll help you stay consistent too. Uploading consistently is hard, it is life gets busy especially if youtube is not the only thing you're focusing on um for me again school's starting up here soon i probably will have a drop off in content and be doing just one video a week maybe two if i can squeeze two out but for the most part it's going to be one a week and i think there's something to be said for having quality over quantity you know focus on putting out videos that you're proud of where you're trying to improve each video, whether that be in your editing, your audio quality, your filming, you know, focus on that over getting out, you know, multiple videos. Uh, I just, I personally think that lends to better growth, but that's just me. I know some people are more about like getting out multiple videos and I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. If you have the time for that, absolutely go for it. I envy you. I wish I had the time for that because there is something to be said also for like really consistent, constant uploads, people like that too. So please, again, everything that I'm saying here is just my experience, how I'm trying to approach YouTube. Realistically, I don't think I talk about this a lot, but usually it takes me anywhere from 15 to 20 hours to fully complete a video. That's prepping in terms of designing my nail sets and then actually filming the nail set going back editing once to get the footage where i want it to be and then doing the voiceover and then editing again to get the voiceover correct and then adding the music on top of that so my video creation process is actually super super long like i said about 15 to 20 hours probably so for me i try to focus more on quality over quantity just because it is it would be very hard for me to do a large quantity of videos because I do try to narrate over the whole video and chit chat with you all while I do a design. So yeah, I guess it just really depends on what your approach is when it comes to your channel. Are you going to focus on getting out more consistent content or doing maybe only weekly uploads or even once every other week and really just trying to focus on making those videos really solid. So yeah, that's just what um, I've learned, what I'm planning on focusing on. And the last thing I really wanted to talk about is um, how I narrate my videos. I treated this as, again, something mainly for me to express myself. And so when I do audio voiceovers, I tend to talk a lot. <laughs> I know some people enjoy that. Some people might not enjoy that so much. There is a whole like nail ASMR community that I would love to do more of. But at the end of the day, I do like using this as almost a journal to share my thoughts on the designs that I'm making. And I think 
interspersing some of your personality in your videos is actually a really good way to find other people who enjoy the type of content you make. A lot of the people I follow, I do because I came across their videos and I really liked their personality and the way that they, you know, interjected some of themselves in the videos. So I want to encourage you all to not be afraid to, you know, be you in your videos. You're going to find that niche of people who really enjoy hearing from you and who like your personality. So yeah, a little cliche, but you know, be you. Um, and I guess that's really it for me. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Um, no, but seriously, thank you for coming and listening to me sort of ramble on about my experience. I really am just so, so grateful to everybody who has been on this journey with me so far, who watches my videos, who comments, who uses my discount codes. It's enabling me to make more content for you guys. Just thank you so much. I really appreciate every single one of you. I love talking to you in the comments. So definitely please make sure that if you ever want to leave a comment and you're hesitant, don't be. I love hearing from you. And I would love it if you join my Discord, if that's something you're interested in. It's just a great place for us to all connect and share events and whatnot. So yeah, I think that's enough uh, rambling for me today. Thank you again for being here. I look forward to seeing you in the next one and I hope you all have an awesome weekend. Bye.